right. Wow. I hope you all saw my video. We got 117 pages to go through, boys. Uh, we're going to dissect these. We're going to go through all 117 pages. I'm going to see if I can find some feelings that I can personally relate to. And maybe this will strike up some conversation in the chat, you know? I think this will be interesting. We're starting from most recent to oldest because that makes the most amount of sense. So the first one we have is Lilo. I don't know why it's Lilo, but it's a friendship that can lie dormant for years only to pick right back up instantly. As if no time has passed since you last saw each other. I have this with multiple people. The one that comes out to me initially is my friend Nathan. We went to the theater like last year sometime. We went to the theater and then got Panda Express and talked about life stuff. So I can relate to this for sure. Hey, Invisible, how you doing, dude? How are you, buddy? I'm glad you saw my video. That was pretty cool. Uh, we have Mitting, feeling the tranquil pleasure of being near a gathering but not quite in it. Oh, hovering on the perimeter of a campfire, chatting outside a party. Oh, so like spectating people, basically. Ah, yeah, yeah, I feel this. Doing great, man. Panda Express and Life Talks. Dude, honestly, I want Panda Express. Not gonna lie. Uh, everyone together is doing okay without the thrill of being there without having... Yeah, so basically you're just eavesdropping. <laughs> I, I know all about this one for sure. Pero, I covered Pero in... Um, my video feeling that no matter what you do is somehow always wrong yikes that's a scary feeling for sure onism frustration of being stuck in just one body that inhabits only one place in time yeah arrow on the map okay so it's like the fact that you're in your own body your entire life and you're not gonna experience anything except like your own body kind of deal i guess which is interesting. I guess because of like how much of the world like you'll never see. Weariness of the same old issues you've always had. Yeah, I talked about that in my video. I have a few of those for sure. Trying to work on, trying to be better, but it's hard sometimes, man. Also, I didn't realize, look at how many notes. Holy cow. So like thousands of people are seeing these. 14,000 notes, I guess, are hearts, likes, probably. Ulch mirrors. I don't know how to say that. Weariness with the same old issues. Oh, oh wait, I already talked about that. Scabless. Proud of a scar on your body. Actually, that's me. Right here. I don't know if I don't know if you can see this. But like right here, I have like this weird the camera can't see it. I don't know how this is gonna work. But basically I have this really weird like Mickey Mouse or old movie camera birthmark scar whatever and then i have uh like the scar right here that i got when i got a mole removed from my eye otherwise i would have been half blind so i feel that one for sure yeah maury talked about that in the video about capturing moments i wish i had captured more moments in my life so i could scroll through it uh xenocene talked about that in the video life is short uh wait Oh, the sense that time keeps going faster. Yeah, dude, I feel that wholeheartedly. Flash over the moment a conversation becomes real and alive. Oh, that's interesting. Hey, hey. Yo, Emerald, what's up? We just started. We're on page two. Um, flash over the moment a conversation becomes real and active, which occurs when a spark of trust shorts out the delicate circuits you keep insulated under layers of irony momentarily grounding the static emotional charge you built up through the decades interesting i don't know about that that's how high school felt when it went bad way too fast yeah true that's fair honestly i don't know if i felt this one when a conversation becomes real and alive i mean i think i felt that occasionally but i can't think of a, a specific instance per se wyatt what's high a feature of modern society that suddenly strikes you as absurd and grotesque. Oh, so like when when the guy jumped on the uh, the counter at the McDonald's, screaming about Szechuan sauce. That that's what I think of when I see this. <laughs> I, I think that's absurd. Um, I don't know, maybe childbirth, probably. Honestly, 
Um, moment of tangency, talked about that in the video. Glimpse of what might have been. Um, cub cubico? What? The state of exhaustion inspired by an act of senseless violence. Y yeah, so like, if you're boxing, or you're just like, working out, I feel, but that's not senseless. Senseless violence. I guess, um, actually, no, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to try to keep this wholesome. I'm not going to mention that, but we all know uh, this one. Uh, Lutalica, part of your identity that doesn't fit into categories. I talked about that in the video. What, page three. Lockism, I think I talked about this one. I can't remember. So I to be struck. Yeah, we talked about this one in the video. I'm going to try to avoid the ones that I've already mentioned in the video because it doesn't make sense to re-say them like Onism. We already talked about that. Avenor, these ones we've already talked about. This one we haven't. Exu Lanis, the tendency to give up trying to talk about an experience because people are unable to relate to it. Dude, whether through, sim whether through envy or pity or simple foreignness. Yeah, dude, I feel this what I that's why I can rarely talk about videos with people in real life because it's like they don't get it. They don't get like that creative side, which is why I rarely talk about it. So I feel that for sure for sure the meantime the moment of realization that your quaintless quaint quintessential future self isn't isn't ever going to show up what which forces the role to fall upon the understudy this one's confusing i don't know if i felt this one I spent years of mourning your lines that one's a bit confusing uh ochiolism the awareness of the smallness of your perspective. Yeah, that's similar to um, that's similar to oh, what was the one? It's similar to Sonder, this one, except it's different. Except it's the act or the realization. But Sonder's also the realization, by which you couldn't possibly draw any. Oh, by which you couldn't possibly draw any meaningful con conclusions. Okay, I see. Embido talked about that. Talked about that. Notice Tollins. We talked about that. I know I did. I thought I did. The realizations that the plot of your life doesn't make sense to you anymore. I know I talked about this in the video, but I don't remember it being a video. I thought it was. I know it was actually. Uh, liberosis. The desire to care less about things to loosen your grip on life. <laughs> oh, I feel that, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Why do I want this music to be piano? What? What do I want this music to be piano? Carmel Dan Carmel Danson? What even is that? I felt that one. Yeah. Lockism. Dren Madalin. We talked about that one. Vel Vel Velachor? Velachor? These pronunciations, I think are based in like sweden or something i can't remember the strange willfulness of used bookstores oh i know lauren really feels this one for sure um which was somehow infused with the patches of time yeah that's fair no i get that um wait the moment you realize that you're currently happy bruh i feel this for sure but this is kind of like um claro Cairo, I dude, my pronunciations are so trash. Honestly, I, I don't do it justice. I think I accidentally mispronounced some words in my video too, and I felt bad about it, but I couldn't really fix it. But like he says it in his own videos, so it's like I don't know. I've only felt that one a few times, right? But yeah, when you currently realize you're happy, oh yeah, dude, for sure. That one's pretty easy. Dude, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this one. <laughs> like, what even is that? Rukarunru? The feeling of returning home after an immersive trip only to find it's fading... Wait. The feeling of returning home from an immersive trip, okay, only to find it fading rapidly from your awareness. The trip? To the extent that you have to keep reminding yourself that it happened at all. 
Even though it felt so vivid just days ago. Yeah, no. I I, th I think I've faintly, faintly felt that. Nighthawk. A reoccurring thought that only seems to strike you late at night. Yeah, that's fair. No, I feel that. Dead Reckoning. To find yourself bothered by someone's death more than you would have expected. Dude. Oh my gosh. No. Dead Reckoning? I've definitely felt that one. Because... I had a dream like weeks ago or something like that of Dead Reckoning where it's like I had a dream that for some reason my girlfriend died, my brother died, and my mother died like at the same time. And I cannot tell you how much grief I felt in my dream. Like it felt so real. Like it was ridiculous. I thought it like, and then I woke up and I l was like, I'm pretty sure I was shaking a little bit, and I was like, what just happened? You know, those suck. Oh, dude, it's the worst. Paro, I already talked about Paro. Moment of awareness that someone you've known for years still has a private and mysterious inner life. That's similar to, um, Sonder, I guess. Midsummer. I felt grief outside the yeah exactly it's like because your brain's still getting over it even though it's just a dream you know it's that whole thing frustration with how long it takes to get to know somebody i don't i don't necessarily feel that but i do recognize that that's a thing like it takes more than one interaction for somebody to be your friend that's just how it works um in general i wouldn't say it's a frustration for me but it's definitely a thing. Um, a kind of psychological, wow, a kind of psychological exoskeleton that can protect you from pain and contain your anxieties. No, nope, I don't have that. <laughs> I, I I don't have that. I my my thoughts and emotions are way too internal. Like it, it like it it hits my heart and my soul. Like I don't have that. I wish I did. Oh, but always ends up cracking under pressure or hollowed up by t Oh, then maybe. <laughs> then maybe that's me. I don't know. Uh, Silience. We already talked about that in the video. Uh, Mal de cu Cuckoo? What's that? A phenomenon in which you have an active social life, but very few close friends. Oh my gosh, yes. I feel that. Like, honestly. Yeah. No joke. Definitely. Keyframe? Does this not have to do with editing? A moment that seems innocuous at the time, but ended up marking a diversion in, into a strange new area of your life. Oh, no. Actually, yeah, I feel that. I have a thing where my emotions stop to avoid pain sometimes. Dude, I wish I had that. Everyone online at this point. Yeah, I know. Exactly. Keyframe. No, I felt this one for sure. Where it's like, you don't realize how many instances of in your life shape you until like after the fact and i've had like a lot of those oh for sure uh a moment of awareness that someone you've known for years still has a we already we already went over this a uh, conversation in which everyone is talking but nobody is listening yeah you don't want it to though that's fair yeah so everybody's like talking oh Simply overlaying disconnected words like a game of Scrabble. Oh, so like when you're in a crowd, I guess? Okay. Catcher. I'm gonna. I do. I can't keep pronouncing these words. Otherwise, this is gonna take me way longer to do <laughs> if I try to pronounce these words correctly. Like the. the like the. the words, not the definitions. Anyways, this one. The sadness that you'll never really know what other people think of you. Dude, yeah, no, I feel that. Oh, 100%, dude. I don't know what you all think of me, <laughs> honestly. I don't know what my friends really think of me, you know? Me when I talk, that's fair. Um, wait, asked? Oh, so I guess people ask certain things and he answers it. Cool, but that's not what this is. This is us focusing on the words. The sense that the future is arriving ahead of schedule, that all those years with the fantastical names like 2013 are bursting from their hypothetical cages into the arena of the present, furiously bucking the grip. Interesting. I don't know if I've ever felt that every day, TBH. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, no. For me, I feel the opposite. I feel like life is going by too slow. But also too fast at the same time. Like, I don't get it. A state of exhaustion inspired by acts of sin. We already talked about- Why is this again? We already went over this. I can't think of one. Actually, no, I could. The frustration of knowing how easily you fit into a stereotype. Even if you never intended to. Even if it's unfair. Even if everyone else feels the same way. I cannot tell you how many times Lauren has told me that I'm a wannabe emo. And I'm like, dude, I'm not. But, like... I, I, I fit way too easily with those aspects and it's sad because like I'm not a sad person I'm actually genuinely like happy and like content but it's like certain things I do or say it's like oh stop trying to be emo it's like dude I'm not even trying like I was literally I, I literally wear this hoodie like every day and it's black so it's like not the emo right and like I would wear it now, but my room gets way too hot with that lamp. So, all right, Monachopsis. Yo, I made a song called Monachopsis, so I knew about this word. The subtle but persistent feeling of being out of place. Yeah, that's me, one hundred percent. Conversational hint that you have something personal to say on the subject, but don't go any further. Yeah. Yeah, I know the feeling. Oh, yeah, that's a very common phrase. Yeah. Yeah. The bittersweet... Oh, bittersweetness of having arrived here in the future where you can... Wait, what? Bittersweetness of having arrived here in the future where you can finally get the answers to... Oh! So it's like you think about things in the past about yourself in the future, and then when you get to the future, you're like, oh, wow, that's how things are now, I think? Bittersweetness of having, yeah, where you can finally get the answers to how things turn out in the real world. Yeah. No, I feel that. 100%. Well, actually, no, technically, I, I haven't felt that yet, but I probably will. Uh, an image that somehow becomes lodged deep in your brain. Yep. I think about a lot of stuff, dude. So many memories and just, like... Yeah, yep. <laughs> I love how, how how the chat's just like agreeing with every single feeling now. It's kind of funny. Um, <laughs> and that's fair, dude. Life's full of feelings. Uh, a phenomenon in which you have an active social life, but very, we already went over that. Why are some of these repeats? Practice of answering a cell phone with a generic hello. Yeah, I feel like everybody does that. Like, okay. The reason I say hello is to make sure that, like, you know, the phone call is actually working, you know? Like, why wouldn't you say hello? Like, you shouldn't just start talking. It's like, you gotta be sure the person hears you before you start talking. But, an imaginary interview with an old photo of yourself. Dude, yes, honestly. I, I haven't done it, like, extensively, but, like, vaguely in the back of my mind. And it's like, yeah, I'm here now, buddy, kind of deal. So I vaguely feel that. Um, it reminds me of the video of the guy made where he interviewed himself 10 years in the future. That's what I, or 20 years? I can't remember. But it's similar to that. It's just making me sad. Oh, I'm sorry. Why are you sad? This is not meant to be a sad experience. This is meant to be a fulfilling experience, you know? Like... I don't know. In my mind, to me, I think it gives me peace to know the why of things. But that's just me. So. Too many emotions at once. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm always sad. Well, that's a yikes. Um, a glimpse of goodness inside people. Yeah. For sure. No, I, I feel that. A flash of real emotion glimpsed in someone sitting across the room. Yeah. Like when somebody's face lights up. Nope. Okay. Uh, the unsettling awareness of your own heartbeat. Yeah. For sure. Sonder. Canopsia. We already talked about those all the time. Well. Yeah. Dude. I sometimes have these realizations that like, oh, wow, my heart's beating right now. But I didn't know that. Oh, I'm breathing right now. But I didn't know that. It's just automatically happening. 
and I get in this weird mental state where it's like not having not freaking out about it but just being like oddly amazed and oddly like I don't know it's weird I guess that's uh uh what was the rubitosis I guess I suffer from rubitosis crazy wow except it's like that except with every part of my body like internally and it's weird it's a weird to think about and I don't try to but it happens like now and it's like wow my body is amazing the inexplicable urge to push people away Ooh. is there a word for grasping for something to try and be original in some sense I think so probably because I feel that You're mentioning breathing <laughs> no no see as soon as i said that i also started manually breathing so it's fine no i understand i get it all right i knew that's what i dude i know can't tell you how many times my brother's done that to me and i'm like dude come on the inexplicable urge to push people away i feel like i do that accidentally when i get emotional when i'm upset about something very personal disown your brother yeah i'll disown um John Hammond time. <laughs> Tilt shift. A phenomenon in which your lived experiences seems oddly inconsequential once you put it down on paper, which turns into an epic <laughs> tragic comedy into a sequence of figures. Huh. As if you're writing a story, but it's already happened to push a lot of people away. Well, that's that's yikes. A hypothetical conversation that you compulsively play out in your head. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. 100%, that's me. Oh yeah, no, yeah, for sure. Especially because of Snapchat, because it takes a while to load Snapchat sometimes, and sometimes it takes a while for people to send me snaps. So obviously I'll have these conversations where it's like, oh, this person's gonna say this, but they're not gonna say this. Why? Because of this. And it's like, oh, this uh, all the time. Well. <laughs> yeah the surge of energy upon catching a glance from someone you like yeah you know when you when you when you when when you're when you're snooping on that on that person you like you know and they look at you and you quickly look away because you're like oh shoot did they see me i don't know no i felt that for sure anchorage the desire to hold on to a time as a pat yes oh finally Oh my gosh, I found it. Yes, that is the one. Yes, I was hoping to find this. Me when I see it. Yeah, exactly. This, Anchorage. No, this is me. This is so me. You don't have, you don't understand how hard it is for me to live in the moment. It's so hard. And the, yeah, the desire to hold on to time as it passes, like trying to keep your grip on a rock in the middle of a river, feeling the weight of the current against your chest while your elders float on downstream calling over to the war of the rapids just let go it's okay let go no oh my gosh no stop <laughs> no this is this is too real stop bruh oh my gosh wow dude no this is this is i was hoping to find this i didn't know this was in here this guy no like actually i've had mental breakdowns because of this alone oh my gosh huh sorry this is sorry yeah I, I i sorry i just had to process because i was like am i gonna find this feeling i don't know there we go on page 11 uh eight years ago wow crazy which is crazy because i think eight years ago i probably felt that I'm not gonna lie so that's weird Plexos. we talked about that the moment you realize that you're currently we already went over that the am amnoidic tranquility of being indoors during a thunderstorm lauren feels that i do not so heartworm a relationship or friendship that you can't get out of your head which you thought you had faded long ago but still somehow alive and unfinished like an abandoned campsite who's smoldering embers yeah no i feel that <laughs> X's be like well actually not all the time but occasionally 
A state of exhaustion of how <laughs> bad people can be to each other. Yeah, no, I, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, all right. Zeno, the smallest measurable unit of human connection, typically exchanged between pe passing strangers. Oh yeah, like a nod. Dude, I was riding my bike today and there were so many people like walking and stuff and we would do the mutual like head nod down. And I was thinking about this while bike riding too. It's like when you don't know the person, you nod your head down. But if you know the person, you nod your head up. And I don't know why that's the case, but a lot of my friends have also noticed that. I wish this wasn't just sorrows because it's kind of, it kind of not good mood. Interesting. Well, actually, uh, in the TED talk, he explained why it's obscure sorrow specifically, like why he used the word sorrow. I think it has something to do with like, it's like a, I don't know. I can't remember, but he explained it wasn't just like, because it's sad. There was like an actual like reason why he used the word sorrows. Um, to be honest, I've been meaning to go through this on my own time anyways, and I figured, hey, this relates to my video, so why don't we just do this, because I think it'd be an interesting experience, you know, I feel like learning about oneself is important to do, you know, um, I do feel bad that you're feeling bad right now, though, because, uh, that wasn't the, um, that wasn't the plan, <laughs> um, but either way, I was going to look through all these at some point. So anyways, uh, the disappointment of, un of being unable to fly. Yes. Yes, please. Oh my gosh. Yes, dude. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, I feel that hundred percent. I wish I could fly, dude. It would be so much fun. I feel like I'm going to see something that I relate to a little too hard. It's not going to be good. No, no, I, I, I have a feeling of that too, honestly, but you know what? At this point, it's like, I've gotten to a, a plate. Let me fly. Dude, honestly, it's like, I've gotten to a point in my life where it's like, I still have these things that I don't understand and finding these words just help at least a little bit where it's like, oh, I'm not alone in this. Oh, other people have felt this. And I think that reassurance just helps, you know, especially when it's been things you've been thinking about for literal years, but you don't know how to describe it, you know? I want to be a dragon, dude, honestly. Right? That'd be cool. <laughs> the feeling where you want to be a dragon, that's probably in here. Um, all right. A feeling of resonant connection with an author or artist you'll never meet. Yeah. For me, that's a lot of music artists, especially because music artists specifically are so personal, you know? So it's like, I get it. You know? Oh, who may have lived centuries ago and thousands of... Oh, so like... So like... Okay, like a past... Okay. Interesting. Thousands of miles away, but can still get inside your head and leave behind morsels of their experience. So this is like Renaissance type deal, I guess. I'll never meet Eve. Hey, never say never, dude. Okay, can we talk about the fact that I would say that way more, except Justin Bieber said it, so obviously I rarely say it, but like honestly, dude, there's so many people I want to meet in my life, and you know, I'm hoping that all of you will be the case eventually. Like, I don't know, I think it'd be fun to have like um, a meetup convention type deal in the next 10 years or whatever. I don't know. Me and MRIS want to do something together for sure. ETH fan meetup went, oh, I was just talking about it. If if I do it, it'll probably be with like Emerias and the gang, honestly. Can we get hugs? Oh, for sure, dude. Honestly. Yeah. Wow. Honestly. Hug time. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of things I want to do in life. That's one of them for sure. Um, frustration that you're not enjoying an experience as much as you should. Yep. No, I, I'm trying to think. I don't know if I can think of a specific instance, but I know that's happened before. So, with everything I do, yikes. 
Um, all right. The exhilarating dread of finally pursuing a lifelong dream. Yeah. No, I feel that. Which requires you to put your true abilities out there to be tested on the open savanna, no longer protected inside the terrarium of hopes and delusions that you created in kindergarten and kept sealed as long as you could, only to break in case of emergency. No, this is me. This is me right now. No, honestly. Yeah. Well, actually, no, I haven't felt that yet, but I'm getting there. Also, this is unrelated, but how many channel points for you to do D&D &D with the peeps? Um, I don't know. It's 200,000 for a sleep stream, so... Um... Honestly, D&D would be fun, but just time, man. It takes a long time to, to do D&D. Like, with setup, and then doing it, and then being consistent with it. Like, it's a lot. Um... Besides, I'm honestly a fate person, because I tried D&D with my friends, right? And there were a lot of things that I wanted to do, but then the game was like, no, you can't do it. And I'm like, oh, sad. So I like fate way more, but I am down for D&D. I just, I, dude, it's just a commitment, man. And I don't know if I can make that commitment right now, honestly. So busy every day. So... Entr entranced and unsettled by the vastness of the universe. <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh, deGrasse. As in Neil deGrasse Tyson. Ha, clever John. Oh, John, you're so clever. Wow. I'm proud of John. That was clever. I like that. That was a good one. Slipcase. One off D&D. One off D&D. That would be fun, yeah. I could use my character that I already made, but I probably won't. But I could, because that would save time. I don't know. Default expression that your face automatically reverts to when idle. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think about uh, my face sometimes, in general. Yep. Neil's stupid and mean. <laughs> Yikes. Contact high five. A touch by someone... Wait. An innocuous touch by someone just by doing their job. Huh. So, I mean waiters, for sure. Oh. As in, oh, okay, yeah, got it. The temptation to step off your career track and become a shepherd in the mountains, <laughs> following your flock between pastures with a sheepdog and a rifle, watching stars at dusk, inventory <laughs> of a small cabin, must <laughs> be kind of hypnotic diversion that allows your thoughts to make a break for it and wander back to the cubicles in the city. <laughs> um, no, honestly. M. Rice has told me he wants that. I think that'd be fun. That doesn't sound... I know. That's the thing. Because, like, eventually, I think it'd be fun to spend, like, a week in, like, a cabin in the woods. But not, like, a cabin in the woods that's in the middle of nowhere. Like, I want it to be next to, like, a road. And next to, like, shops. And next to grocery stores. So, basically, not in the middle of nowhere where I can get lost. Like, I want to visit a place for a week where it's just like it feels isolated but then you take a 10 minute drive and you're not that would be like the perfect like vacation for me not gonna lie because then like you have a bunch of beautiful scenery you can hike i love hiking so much you know you can wade next to the river you can fish if you want i'm not a fisher personally but you know you can isn't cabin in the woods a gamer show it's a horror movie right so, um, but no, it's not for me. It's not stepping off my career path. It's like, oh, if I could choose a vacation of my choosing, it would be that I would love that because honestly, I'm way too like involved in technology stuff. Wow. Crazy. Um, <laughs> but like, it's tough to step away from technology and I feel like doing that every once in a while really helps. And I feel like not a lot of people do it like me. It's very difficult for me to not do that so a kind of melancholy trance in which you become completely absorbed in vivid sensory details yeah that happens to me when i daze off and beat out wait that was in the video though oh well 
I'm able to do that. Ah. Lap year. The age at which you become older than your parents... Wait. The age in which you become older than your parents were when you were born, which signals that your leg of the relay race has already begun. Ah, uh, no, I haven't felt that yet. Nah. With the internet thing. Ah, right, yeah. That's fair. No, I feel that too, because, like, I have a lot of... I talk to like certain people sometimes on a daily basis so if i didn't have the internet i couldn't talk to them so i i so like i feel that but but it, like if i was with the people on the trip then i wouldn't need to so uh the dream visions the dream visions of things in your life which appear totally foreign but are still somehow yours what all part of a parallel world oh fancy matter All parts of a parallel world whose gravitational pull raises your life's emotional stakes, increases your chance. Hmm. No, I haven't felt that. Nah. Uh, flash over. The moment of conversation becomes real enough. Wait, we already... I think we already went over that? I think? Why are some of these duplicates? Hanker sore. Finding a person so attractive, it actually... <laughs> 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 Yo, like actually though. <laughs> Why is that a thing? Is that a thing? <laughs> Dude. Oh, okay. So I'm going to say this. I feel this for one specific thing. My brother has like the oh, what's it called? Why am I blanking now? It's, um, not immune system. What is it? It's, um, wow, I'm literally blanking. I can't remember what it's called. Is there a word for getting hungry, then going to the fridge and forgetting why? You, so you go back to where you were and get hungry again? Mm, I don't know. But for me, I open the fridge like 10 times and I still can't find what I want to eat. So that's probably a feeling too. No, but like, oh, what's it called? It's not an immune system. It's a, um, digestive, no, it's relating to the digestive system. Every time you open a door, your brain resets some of it. Yep. Yeah, for real though. Um, no, hanker sore. I feel that because of my brother. Um, ah, uh, what is it called? Oh my gosh. My brain won't let go of this thing. Yes. Thank you. That's it metabolism thank you oh my gosh my brother has like the best metabolism he eats whatever he wants and he's the skinniest thing ever meanwhile i'm trying to watch while i eat i'm exercising i'm drinking a lot of water and i'm nowhere near him in like body physicality and it sucks but that's life so this is why i feel that Cause I'm like, dude, he's not even taking care of his body. He needs a better body than me. Why? <laughs> so that's why I laughed because subconsciously I feel that about my brother. Do I actually care? No, not really, but it's just funny. I can do anything I want and I'm bones, bruh. So jealous. I eat wheat and already I feel just like you're fat. Haha. -ha. It's like, oh, I don't want to be bones. Fair. The fear, fear that he may be thin, but he's by no means as healthy as you're being literal. If you're being literal. No, it's because of his, well, it's fair. No, he's, he's not, he's fine. Like, but that's the thing. Like he looks healthy, but like, I, he, like he doesn't watch what he eats and he doesn't exercise that much. So I'm just saying on the outside, it looks but it's like, bruh. Anyways, fear that learning that the name of something, a bird, a constellation, an active stranger will somehow ruin it. What? Huh. No, I don't know if I felt that. That's, that's foreign to me. I, I mean, I guess, uh, well, I don't know. Probably not, actually. 
sadness that you'll never be able to know how history will turn out. Uh, kind of. You'll pass on the joke of being active without ever learning the punchline. Yeah, no, actually, yeah, that's fair. Fear that ETH is actually a fruit. Pineapple boy be like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fear that your connections with people are ultimately shallow. That although your relationships feel... Con congenial all the time an audit of your life would produce an emotional safety deposit box of low interest holdings which will indicate that you were never really a risk of joy sacrifice or loss yeah no i feel that with some of my friends not because they're bad people but because i haven't talked to them in years you know so yeah anyone i talk to yikes Guess that includes me. Yikes. No, that's fair. No, I understand that. What is this word though? Like, how do I even say that? Apomercersimisophobia. Why? How does that make okay, whatever. Um okay, dude. John just like hit his keyboard. Are you seeing this? John just like hit his keyboard. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's me when I just hit my keyboard. How, no, that's not a real word. How do I even say that? Very sweet. <laughs> Actually, yeah. No, that's fair. <laughs> How do you say that? Like, come on, John. Really? Come on, dude. Actually, I could probably leave this zoomed in. Uh... Actually, oh, there, I'll do that. Uh, condition characterized. Oh, this is actually way better. I should have zoomed in earlier. My apologies. Yeah, like, how do you even say that? The feeling when you hit your keyboard. <laughs> actually, that would have been perfect. A condition characterized by scanning faces in a crowd looking for a specific person who would have no reason to be there. Yep. Mm hmm. Which is your brain's way of checking to see whether they're still in your life. Wait, what? Oh, no, yes. Uh -huh. No, 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 I feel this. Okay, yeah. Okay, no, for sure. Okay, now I need to explain why I'm saying that. So, casually putting... Yeah, so... In a circle of my friends, there is a chance that I will see, like, my ex-girlfriend, right? So, this definitely relates to that. Um... And like, dude, it's been like three years and like, I still feel just like anxiety, dude. It's bad. Huh. So yes, no, I definitely feel this one. It's a yikes. Yeah. The instinctive tendency to see someone as you knew them in their youth. Yeah. I feel that with some of my friends. I remember having childhood friends that like were so innocent and so pure and then i see them now and they're like totally the opposite person and it's sad because i used to be best friends with them and then they turned into this like weird jerk and it's like what happened to you dude we were vibing lauren beats up eats at <laughs> no dude um no actually um it's so funny because the summer not well the year before, no, the year after uh, she broke up with me, um, I think that summer, like me, Lauren, and my ex were all at the same camp. So we were, and, and like we were in the same friend circles and everything too. So that was a fun time. But it was weird, because like initially it was like, oh. But as the week went on, we actually were vibing pretty well, all three of us, me, Lauren, and my ex. And it was weird, because it was like, I didn't feel anxiety, you know? And then literally, like, after camp ended, like, that anxiety came back, like, whenever I saw her. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so I don't get it. I haven't seen her in, like, two years, whatever, you know? I don't really care. But, like, wait, why was I? Oh, be wait, how did I, how did I get to that from this? I've never been to a camp. Oh, okay. I went every year since I was, like, 13 church camp church camp was pretty fun 
been camping. Well, no, it's for me when I say camp, I'm not talking about camping. I'm talking about like church camp, which is pretty fun. The sad awareness that the unfolding plot of your life feels new and profound, but is not unique. Yeah. Just one of a few dozen possible rips. Yeah, no, that's fair. I get that. The feeling of delicate luck after casually tossing something across the room and hitting your target so crispy and perfectly that you feel no desire to even attempt another shot, which is a more compelling argument for the concept of monogamous love than anything sunk to a guitar. <laughs> uh, yeah. Swish fulfillment. Yeah, no, I felt this. I feel this. You throwing trash away? No, it, yeah, actually. For me, it was a sock in my laundry basket when I was on a video call with Lauren. I did it first try and I got so excited. She's like, wow. The post distraction effort to recall the reason why you're feeling particularly anxious or. In yep, that's me. Post distraction effort. Yeah, oh, yeah. Would you retrace your sequence of thoughts like a kid wandering across a neighborhood and gathering? Yep. Yes, an emotion you haven't felt in years that you might have forgotten about completely if your emotional playlist hadn't been left on shuffle. Dang, that's deep. That's a deep cut. <laughs> Yikes. Um, the habit of forgetting how important someone is to you until you see them again. Yep, no, for real though. Like, honestly. Me when I haven't seen Lauren in three months because of college, like bruh like literally the first time i see her again it's just like euphoric it's just like insane you know no i feel that it's like there and it's and it's made me realize there's such a difference between like messaging somebody and like seeing them in person total difference like total difference the insomnia born jolt of awareness that when you die that these passing years aren't just scenes from a dress rehearsal rounds of ongoing game or chapters in a story they'll be telling later but our footprints being lapped by the steadily gathering tide of an unfathomable abyss which wouldn't so like leaving a legacy but not oh footprints so like okay now that makes sense stream talking about relationships <laughs> no, it's accidental. Honestly, that's not my intention. It's just that was the first thing. That's like the first connection I can make to these words. Also, uh, when you hit your keyboard part two, John, John, what what's the meaning of this, John? What do you? <laughs> <laughs> why? <laughs> just why? Oh my gosh, dude. What it, what, uh, what, uh, bruh, John, you need to explain this to me. Yeah, like how? I'm not even going to attempt. There's no way I can. How? <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Anyways, all I see is fun. <laughs> yeah, for real. Uh, <laughs> this is when you spam autocorrect. Yeah, honestly. The feeling when you spam autocorrect. The instinctive tra trance of a campfire in the dark, spending hours roasting and watching it as it settles and sinks into the ground like a heap of shipwrecks, whose sailors raise their flickening sails, trying to signal that the prevailing winds of your life are about to shift. Dude, I love how poetic these uh, definitions are. That's so good. Lacuna. A twinge of sadness that there's no frontier left. That as the last explorer trudged with his armies toward the blank spot on a map, he didn't suddenly remember his daughter's upcoming piano recital and return for home. See, I related to this and then I kept reading and then I didn't. <laughs> okay, watching a fire. Yeah, exactly. No, I feel this for like games, right? Like Minecraft. Well, not really Minecraft, but like the only thing I can think of is like Call of Duty zombies maps because when you play them for years with friends, you get to a point where it's like you know the map you know where everything is you know where all the parts are you know uh what to do in every single map so that's how i i feel that with this because i wish it was like new to me and not just that but there are other like situations situations in my life 
I guess specifically with games, you know, where it's like, I want to experience this again. The Beginner's Guide, man. I wish I could experience that again with fresh eyes, but I can't. I just can't. And if you haven't played the game yet, please do. Honestly, really good. A feeling when you want to write, but you become poetic the more you do. That's the website. No, but see, we're going back in the past. So we started at the most recent. So now we're going back into the past, right? So technically, he would be less poetic the more we go. I like cod zombies being used to explain emotion. <laughs> that was the first thing I thought of, dude. I don't know, man. The intense heat on the skin of a sleeping person, a radioactive byproduct of an idle mind humming with secret delusions, which then vaporize when plunging into the cooling bath of reality. What are these? Wow. Dream. Yeah, that's fair. I feel like cuddling in general, though, would probably be this. Actually, there's been a few times where, I, where like, we're sitting on the couch and Lauren is just, like, just fell asleep on me. So I guess I've felt that before, yeah. That makes sense. Alright, what is... Okay. Well, yeah, it's like... <laughs> don't know what that is, right? I like the warmth of sleeping boy. <laughs> the realization while talking to yourself that someone else is within earshot. Dude, me when I'm recording a video be like... No, actually, this is this is too true. This is too true. Only, only when I'm recording, and that's the only time, literally. Like I swear, it's not with streaming; it's with recording, and I don't get it. It makes no sense. Huh. That and phone calls. Those are the two, for me. The McFly effect? Okay, dude. Okay, dude. What is this? What is this? So, it's like, oh, uh, w when, you, when you go with your grandpa into the future in a DeLorean, that feeling when... The phenomenon of, of observing your parents interact with people they grew up with. Hmm. Interesting. Marty, you're in the definition. Marty! Yeah. Scabulous. Wait, we already went over that. Hearing a person with a thick accent pronounce a certain phrase. That's me with British people. I love British people so much. So, well, uh, when you dream, when you, ugh, when you dream about someone, you know, skews how you feel about them the next day me when my girlfriend mother and brother die hmm crazy it's made me realize how much i actually love my mother you know crazy tomato <laughs> okay an intense desire to bite deeply into the forearm of some <laughs> what <laughs> what what hold up <laughs> why <laughs> What? Two thousand people? Two thousand? <laughs> no! Why? <laughs> it's called Love Bites so Eve. Get with the program. But why forearms specifically? That's what I don't understand. Oh, like a vampire? But that doesn't make... But that... I don't know. That's confusing. That's oddly specific, John. I'm not judging John, but like, dude. Why? <laughs> Exposed fan. <laughs> half forlorn, half escapist ache of a train whistle calling in the distance at night. That's oddly specific. Wait, what? I thought there were 117 pages. What? Why is, is this, is it still loading? Why is this not loading? It's 117 pages. Why is this not loading? Stream ends. Oh, dude, that can't be all of them. Why is this just like, I thought there were 100. It says, it says right here, 117 pages right here why is it not loading 
Do I have to go to his Twitter? I hope I don't have to go to his Twitter. I don't want to go to his Twitter. Uh, pedestal creep. Instinctive quiz upon meeting your idol rooted in the awareness. Making a show of looking away as someone types the password in front of you. Yeah. No, actually. For sure. Uh, wistfulness upon reading a news magazine's back issues from 1997. What? Why is that? That's oddly. That doesn't. Why 1997? Flush with misplaced panic. Hmm. A phantom vibration of your hip whose correspondent pocket is phoneless. Dude, no, actually. Phantom buzzes are real. Please tell me that's not just me. Cause like, I've, oh my gosh, dude. Phantom buzzes. Huh. That moment when a toothbrush in hand you wrist, what? That moment when toothbrush in hand you misread your toothpaste's boast of helping. Ah, that's weird. Zzz. The pleasure of hearing goofy greetings echo across a mountain range. Interesting. Yearning to move into a photo from hundreds of years ago. Yeah, depends on the photo. Hearing someone with a thick accent pronounce a certain phrase. We already went over that. Uh, to hit a rhythmic pothole during an online conversation. Which then spits. What? Wait, why an online? That's weird. Why are you in light mode? Harmless stumble whose resulting jolt of adrenaline unsettles you for the rest of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Or fly effect. Devil's avocado. What? A fleeting but reoccurring awareness that no matter how you may be at ping pong. At ping pong? What? <laughs> Why ping pong? Secretly yearning for lightning to strike you. I mean, I've had the thought, but I don't yearn for it. Ping pong. The Twitter seems... Uh, dude, Twitter looks weird in dark mode. I'm not going to lie. No matter that you sense an inside joke that has been exhausted, meaning you'll have... Ah. Uh... Yeah, no, honestly, I feel that. For sure. Phenomenon where you and acquaintance are walking towards each other from a... From an op... From an like so you're here he's here and you're just like walking towards each other yeah someone with a habit of needlessly overthinking the simplest of <laughs> reverse oh my gosh see i was gonna say that i'm this and then i read the word and i'm like i'm not gonna say that i'm that <laughs> needlessly overthinking the simplest of concepts that's me though it honestly is like <sighs> open source blindness Tangerine slice glow of summer sun through the through closed eyes. Yep. No, for sure. Melissa Block. The inability to connect a voice you know well with their face. Ping pong avocado. Someone who really enjoys doing something fun and simple. Me bicycling. Let's go. I love biking. Yearning to have an extra sibling around your age. Whose vibe would be a riff on yourself? I love how he uses vibe. Um, no. I don't, actually. Sada Reverse. That's called being blind. <laughs> the hypothetical possibility that you could disown your teenage self. <laughs> huh. I don't think I would want to, honestly. If I'm being honest. Tran Tranquility of dishwasher noise. <laughs> <laughs> Steady rhythmic slushing reminds you. Uh, I do like the noise. Not gonna lie. Night Rider syndrome. Disillusionment upon rewatching a beloved pop culture touchstone of your youth. Yeah. Sure. So that's a reply. Disorientation when you step outside a movie theater into unexpected darkness. No. Um, the glazed, vaguely cross-eyed look of someone who just took off their glasses. What happens if you, if I cheer a hundred bits, then you give me a dollar. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Um, the realization while talking to yourself that someone else is... Well, I already had that. Please, been effect. Tendency for the day after a really good day to be... Oh, so like you have a good day and then you... Because you had such a good day, you expect the next day to be bad. I mean, no. I feel the opposite where it's like if I'm having a really bad day, then it's like, well, at least it's just today, you know? But satisfaction of updating software the bug fix dude come on man that's easy game played while stuck with someone you don't know and wish the player talk what when things get too good i know something bad is gonna well that's a that's a way to think but not one that i subscribe to i feel bad day vibe work <laughs> the intense heat on the skin of this wait we already anti-aliasing curiosity about the real person behind each internet username yep for sure laughter shock an embarrassing memory from school that slips back to your head out of nowhere not from school for me mostly because i was homeschooled my entire life whoa but camp yeah for sure a moment of exasperation upon learning that yet another cultural icon is an urban legend i don't know so you can't play caramel song though i probably not uh feeling of revisiting photos of yourself as a teenager nah the instinctive trance of a camp we already had that emotional punch of lyrics written in foreign languages yeah le feast the uh, ratatouille song man honestly that hits hard it's a banger, quite honestly. Oh, yeah. Uh, the habit of forgetting how important someone is. Oh, you already had that. Feeling of always having to spell out your last name. <laughs> yeah. Jojo. Satisfaction of lists. A series of bullet points being fired into the air. Ooh. Hey, I love my checklists. So, oh, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> Heck no, alright. Uh, already had that. No what you decide whether to give a handshake or a hug. Yeah. That's fair. <clears throat> However, the longer I've lived life, the more I've given hugs to people in general. How about both? <laughs> yeah. The eerie tranquility of fast moving clouds. Yes. Oh yeah, dude. When I'm in the car. Not driving, but in like the passenger seat. You know, I love looking at the clouds and the scenery and thinking about life. Those are cool to watch. Oh, dude, yeah, they're beautiful. I've now gotten progress on my coloring. That's epic, dude. Uh, already had that. Highly ritualized performance of insisting upon paying the check at the end of the meal. <laughs> me. Bro, Lauren's gonna make me broke. Uh, riskful foreboding at the first signs of autumn. Oh, yeah, dude. I love that. The yellow leaves start to appear. I love, yeah, I love the colors. Uh, phase out. A mood totally out of sync with everyone else around you, including dance floor pensiveness. Yeah, no, I feel that. Dinner guitar the mortifying stretch of silence after a joke bombs in a large group my life oh my gosh honestly i love dead air guitar that's pretty that's pretty great i like i like that that was clever those yeah right and then somebody says your exact same joke and the exact opposite happens where everybody bursts out in laughter and you're like bruh golf scream I hate that yeah state of bewilderment at an unexplained shift in someone's mood me that's like me as in like i'm the person whose mood shifts <laughs> the sad awareness that the unfolding plot of your life feels new and profound i think we already have that 
The cringe of, embarrassed, of embarrassment while witnessing an oddly public display of emotional vulnerability. Oh, dude. Proposal fails. Oh my gosh. Those are the worst. Dude. Oh my gosh, man. Like, huh? I'm gonna refresh the stream. Okay. I laugh at those. Dude, no. Ah. It, it, it hurts me inside. Cause I'm like, dude, that's, I like, I don't know. I don't have words. It's just so bad. Um, cocktail party practice of smiling and nodding when you have an absolutely no idea. <laughs> Fair. Crushing sense that the future is arriving. No, I already had that. The signet tendency to see someone as you knew them in, well, we already had that. Nevaska. Mid-morning wind warp, mind warp of looking out your window to find the neighborhood buried. Well, what? That's weird. Bathroom sink fatigue with the laborious maintenance of having a body. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Feeling that everything has been already been done. Everything is remix, right? I uh, already had that. I already have that. Exhausted by politeness. Interesting. Fear that learning the same name of so oh, I already had that. When you think about it, a, fu a feature of modern society that suddenly strikes you as absurd. Huh. Yeah, I feel like that there are a few of those, but I can't think of any at the top of my head. So... I feel goffish. Ah, got it. Musical flavor found in electric guitar solos that compels you to snarl, squint, and venture. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Uh, already had that. I, what? Do you, stop moving. Habit of closing a browser tab to go do something else only to absent mindly return to it. Dude, yep. No, that, that was me today. For sure. Yeah. Imaginary committee of elders that keep running a running log of your mistakes. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, temptation to step off your career. We already had that. Uh... An emotion found in photos of those who have since died. Yikes. Well, the point at which you become older, we already had that. Already had slipcase. Already had Degrassi. I think we're, I think we almost caught up to all of them. Depends on who it is, that's fair. I think we're caught up. Ah, uh, frustration that you're not enjoying an experience as much as you should. Fair. It's like when you make your passion project a job. Wow, that's crazy. Um, so like if you like golfing, but all of a sudden you're a professional golfer. Now since all you're doing is golfing, obviously golfing is going to be less enjoyable. I feel like this community would enjoy watching East struggle with Celeste on stream. You're not going to, you're not going to stop talking about Celeste, are you? <laughs> You're really determined, aren't you? <laughs> Feeling like resonant connection with an author. How would I show that, of course? Smallest. Wait, I think we've gone through all of them? I, maybe? State of exhaustion. No, I already had that. I think we gone through all of We've gone through all of them. I like Celeste. Yeah, no way. I think we've caught up to all of them. I think we did it. I think we did it. Juska? I don't remember that one. Literally means wall builder sadness. Interesting. I think Celeste over dirt. <laughs> the sadness of having no new messages after being out of contact with somebody. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Let's see. Yeah. Image that somehow becomes lodged deep in your brain. I think we've gone. Sorry, Hunter. Yikes. Elias. <laughs> Uh, hint that you have something more to say. <clears throat> I still love Monochopsis. Uh, I think we actually went through all of them. A state of moral exhaustion inspired by acts of horror in the news. Oh, dude, yeah. For sure. That's why I, ra I rarely check the news. It's so depressing all the time, man. Uh, I think, I think we've, I think we got through all of them. I keep saying it, but I keep finding more. Where did the extra hundred go? I think it might be a typo. Hey, John, there aren't 117. There's only 17, bruh. That was fun though. I learned a lot and that's good it was anchorage this is the one anchorage is me i swear this is like the strongest feeling i've felt in my life is this anchorage bruh actually i'm gonna tweet now i'm gonna tweet i suffer from anchorage why not <laughs> 